Hello, and thank you for joining me. There is a chill in the air. The days are shorter, and the rain is frequent. Fall is in full swing, but that just means the soup tastes even better. So, let's celebrate soup season by making one of the most classic recipes in the soup repertoire. Today, we are talking leek and potato soup, and we will be taking a look at not just one, but two different variations on the classic that you can try. One is by iconic food television pioneer Julia Child, and the other is from legendary master chef Jacques Pepin. But don't let the names intimidate you. Both soups are in fact very easy to make. I'm talking five ingredients simple. But what's interesting is that despite the similarity in ingredients, the difference in the technique produces a rather different taste. As far as whose is better, well, that is up for you to decide. Let's start with Julia Child's recipe for leek and potato soup, because between the two simple recipes, hers is the simplest. Julia's recipe includes leeks, potato, water, salt, and a little cream. That's really it. Leeks are meant to be the star of the show. And with that in mind, let's take just a moment to talk about this special vegetable, because it might be intimidating for you if you've never used it before. In fact, I can still remember the very first time I ever bought some and the uncertain feeling I had back then. But really, there isn't much to know. But feel free to jump ahead if you already know how to treat leeks. Leeks are in the allium family, which includes onions, garlic, shallots, and chives. They look like jumbo-sized scallions and have a mild taste. You'll experience some that are really giant and others that are smaller, but they are all treated the same. Because leeks grow as bundle of leaf sheaths, they need to be cleaned properly as they will often be a little dirty. And you will also probably need to trim just a bit of the tougher green leaves off the top, but this doesn't take much time. First, I just take the bottommost part of the leek off where the roots are attached, then I examine the top to see just how much trimming we need to do. This one looks almost ready to go already, but I will just take a little bit of the dark green part away, and to do that, I use a small knife to make cuts shallow enough so I can just break off one leaf at a time. And as you can see, when peeling it back some, there's a bunch of sand there that we don't want in our soup. To decide where to cut, I'm picking a line where it seems like the light green is transitioning to dark green. And of course, if the outer leaves look super loose or papery, you can just peel the whole thing off until you get to a place that is fresher looking. And that's all the trimming I really need to do. Now I'm just going to make two cuts to split the leek in quarters lengthwise, starting just a little bit above the root end of the leek so everything stays intact. I run my knife all the way up Then I rotate the leek and make the same cut again. Now you can see that the leek has opened up nicely and we can just run that under the faucet and it will be ready for cooking, nice and clean. Now that you know how to clean leeks, let's talk about measurements. For Julia's recipe, you need one pound, that's about 450 grams of cleaned and sliced leeks. I just lay my cleaned leeks down on the cutting board and get slicing. It doesn't need to be that fine. And now for the supporting actor in this soup, potatoes. You will also need a pound, again about 450 grams. And we just get those washed and peeled, and then cut them into small, approximately uniform pieces. Let's call those rough inch size pieces. And hey, guess what? The knife work is all done. Let's get cooking. It's as easy as can be. We get a nice sturdy pot on the stove. We go in with our leeks. We go in with our potatoes. And we go in with two quarts of water, which is very close to two liters for my metric friends. We also give that about a tablespoon of salt and turn the heat on about medium high. And once that comes up to a boil, we just drop the heat so that it stays at a steady simmer and keep cooking until the potatoes are tender, which should take around 20 minutes. Things are looking good around the 20 minute mark, but to make sure, I just pull out a potato and give it a test with my finger. Yeah, that's tender, so we are ready to puree. I've got my trusty stick blender here, which I highly recommend if you make a lot of soups, but a regular blender or food processor would also work here. 
I'm just blending until everything goes smooth. And as you can see, once the starches in those potatoes are opened up and exposed, the whole soup tightens up a bit and becomes nice and velvety. And speaking of which, a final velvety touch, we just want to go in with a splash of cream. Julia calls for 4 to 6 tablespoons, 60 to 90 milliliters, which for Julia Child standards is very conservative, especially considering the overall volume of this soup. Of course, we need to taste for final seasoning, but that's basically it. Suggested garnish is some creme fraiche and chopped soft herbs, which is what I went with. As you might imagine, the taste is very clean indeed. Julia's intention with using water as opposed to stock or broth was to make sure the subtle taste of the leeks could shine. And I appreciate that with this recipe. A leek in potato soup where leek is the predominant flavor. But we are not quite done yet. Let's also take a look at Jacques Pepin's recipe for the same soup and see how it compares. Just so you know, I will be giving measurements for a full recipe, but you will see me making a half size version in the video because my apartment of two can only eat so much soup. Anyway, for this recipe, leeks also feature prominently, so we get those cleaned and ready to go. We need 10 ounces of leeks, that's about 283 grams, and we are just slicing into approximate one inch pieces. We also need one medium sized onion, which we can just do the snap trick to peel, and then we simply slice it up. As for potatoes, we need one and a half pounds, about 680 grams, and we just want to wash and peel those and cut those into chunks. Jacques' recipe calls for approximate two inch pieces. With our veggies sliced up, we put a pot on the stove over medium heat and we give ourselves two tablespoons of olive oil. When the oil starts to shimmer, we go in with our onions and leeks and saute them for about five minutes. We want those onions and leeks to soften up and start to take just a little bit of color. After five minutes, with some occasional stirring, we seem to have met that goal. The onions and leeks have wilted down and some are taking on a golden brown coloring. Now we go in with those potatoes, and instead of water, Jacques uses chicken stock. We need six cups of that, which I have here. Now we just give ourselves a nice pinch of salt and a few grinds of black pepper. And bring that up to a boil. And once at a boil, we drop that down to a strong simmer and let it go for about 25 minutes or until our potatoes are nice and tender. I check in around the 25 minute mark and indeed, as you can see, my potatoes are nice and tender. Now to finish, we throw in three tablespoons of butter and puree the soup the same as before. Just letting your appliance of choice run until a smooth and velvety texture has been achieved. Suggested garnish for Jacques soup is croutons and chervil. Chervil is a little hard to come by at the grocery store, so I'm opting for chives again. I just picked a few and sliced them just as beautifully as I can, though Jacques wouldn't be opposed to just using some scissors. And for croutons, I have a nice old piece of bread which I just trim the crust off of and dice into little cubes. Then I just saute those little bread cubes up in a bit of butter and olive oil until they are golden brown and crispy. Oof, looking nice. And now we are ready to serve. We want to serve that soup nice and hot. In the colder months, it can be a good idea to warm up your bowls in a warm oven before pouring the soup or the temperature can really drop if the plate is super cold. So there I have my soup and petite croutons. and thinly sliced chives. 
Only thing left to do is taste. Mmm. Very nice. And predictably, a little richer because of that chicken stock. So, after all that, where do these soups stand? Well, Julia's recipe is much lighter in flavor, in large part due to the use of water instead of stock. But I love how simple it is. It's great to have a soup where you don't have to stress if you don't have any chicken stock on hand. It's actually a three ingredient soup if you don't count the water and salt. And with Julia's soup, it is probably more appropriate as part of a larger multi-course meal. You could eat a whole bowl of her soup and still have plenty of room for a rich main course like duck la orange or beef burgundy. Jacques soup has a richer flavor and a darker color due to the sautéing of the aromatics and the use of chicken stock. Because of this, I feel Jacques soup is better suited for a situation where the soup itself is the main course. And if incorporated into a larger meal, a smaller portion might be considered. So, yeah, I'm a cop-out. I can't really say that one is better than the other. And I don't think Jacques or Julia would either. They understand cooking as a flexible art. And with that in mind, I would encourage you to, of course, consider your own tweaking of these recipes. Maybe try Julia's recipe with vegetable stock instead of water, or a mix of water and chicken stock, or use that same strategy with Jacques soup if you wanted to lighten it up a bit. Either way, try to remind yourself that cooking doesn't have to be stressful or overly precise, especially with soup. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this look at two great chefs interpretation of a classic. If you like this video and these recipes, do me a favor and click the like button below the screen. It helps make my videos more visible to a wider audience. And also feel free to comment with any questions or reflections. I try to explain as much as possible in my videos, but I am always willing to explain a little more if you need clarification. And don't forget to subscribe as well. The channel has been doing well lately with quite a few new members, and that is very exciting for me and my editor, so keep up the momentum. There are more great videos to come, including one that will feature a world-famous culinary guest. So, stay tuned, and until next time, cheers!